let's start at the top here. The college football playoff select committee went chalk the way that we thought it would go following Ohio State, Michigan, and the various rivalry games that ensued. We got Georgia at one. Nobody's arguing there. We got Michigan at two. I'm not arguing there. Florida State at four. Washington at three. Five and six. Oregon and Ohio State, I think, is tomato, tomato. I think at this point, I don't trust this committee with its resume looking. Like, I, I just, I see ranked wins, and then I see them making the rankings, right? If you put Kansas State at 25, as opposed to Utah, you're giving somebody a ranked win, like, say, Texas, and you're taking one away from Oregon, you know, like, say, Utah. But even here, you're seeing Oregon is getting much more respect than Ohio State. And I think this is a lot about three straight losses to Michigan and less about their first loss of the season, and frankly, the last time they might get to play football until they hope to get into a New Year's Six Bowl. But now that we know what the top six look like, really the top eight is what we're talking about. We got legitimately, I think, seven teams, but eight because I'm including Ohio State here, with an opportunity to make the college football playoff. And that's really cool because this is the last year for which we're going to have a four-team playoff, and we have yet to see the committee have to actually deal with some muss, some fuss, and some mess following a championship Saturday going into Selection Sunday. So let's keep it simple to start. The easiest scenario for you to keep in your head is if the top four win their respective conference championship games this weekend, all three, or excuse me, all three, all four will be 13-0 and 0 with a Power 5 championship. We have never seen a Power 5 champion go undefeated and miss the college football playoff. That said, right? There's 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 some movement here, right? Because many people would tell you that Oregon is a better football team than Washington and so forth. And we'll get into the Pac-12 championship here in a little bit. But that's the easiest scenario is those top four. They win their games. They're going to be in. The rankings won't change. Now, the doomsday scenario or the one that I like the most because they're really, I think, something like 24, 25 different ways we could see this going. But this is the one that I think is most entertaining. 13-0 Michigan beating Iowa, though. Iowa, we'll get into it, I think has a shot there. 13-0 Washington with a narrow win against Oregon. 13-0 Florida State with a narrow win against Louisville. 12-1 Bama with a narrow win against Georgia. And 12-1 Texas with a blowout win of Oklahoma State. Because at this point, we're not just talking about wins and losses, we're talking about style points. So if you're blowing out Oklahoma State like you blew out Texas Tech 57-7, that gives the committee something else to think about, knowing that you have that win over Alabama who would be the SEC champion, who had stopped the team that looks unstoppable from winning its 30th consecutive game in the two-time defending national champion, George Bulldogs. Florida State here is the fly in the ointment because most of us would agree that of the four teams here that are undefeated, Florida State looks the least like a national champion. It has lost its Heisman caliber quarterback in Jordan Travis. It played a terribly soft schedule, like frosting on top of that cupcake, more frosting than there is cupcake, if I'm being quite honest about what they've done in the ACC. But we're also talking about a Florida State team that hasn't won a conference championship in almost 10 years. Got to take it back to 2014. And a team that every step of the way has given you pause, has given me absolutely every opportunity to question them. That said, I'm not leaving them out of a college football playoff if they run the table 13 and 0 given what we know about what's in front of them and what's behind. I think that the only way that this kind of gets interesting is with Georgia. Would you leave out a 12 and 1 Georgia from the college football playoff knowing that Texas blew out Oklahoma State and that Texas beat Alabama, which you know is that whole Russian doll thing of transitive wins. That I think would give them pause, but this all gets cleaned up relatively easy if Georgia takes care of business or frankly if Louisville can somehow just upset Florida State. And I wouldn't put past Louisville to do that. I also wouldn't put it past Florida State to blow that game. That said, again, we'll get into this as we talk about the conference championship games. But I think that the one that I'm really excited about is the one that everybody else is really excited about, and that's Alabama, Georgia. And I think that Alabama has shown both it can be great and it can absolutely have you scratching your head like it did against Auburn because you damn near lost that football game. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.